So we're out at Hopper Sports Cars today, and I'm going to give this little boy a test, uh, the Hopper Type 5. It's running a Toyota Twin Cam, a 20 valve turbocharged engine. So we're going to see what this baby can do. So stay tuned, we're going out with it right now. So I've just been charging up the hill here in Cape Town. This is radial, uh, amazing day out, sun shining, and I've got a great car with me. The Harper Type 5 sports car built by Craig Harper from Harper Motorsports. Uh, let me just tell you one thing. Anything and everything you think you know about driving, forget it. If you're used to driving normal cars, road cars, maybe even if they're high performance powered cars, when you're driving in an open seater like this, it's a completely different experience. This car is light, powerful, nimble on the road. This is something you really need to watch when you're driving. But that being said, I've had a little bit of traffic driving with a car. It's as easy as a normal car. It's got all the Toyota underpinnings. If you're used to driving a dad's Corolla, then this is exactly as easy as driving that car. We're gonna go have a look inside and I'll run you through a few things with the car right now. So this is the beast as they call it, the Type 5. We're sitting inside and I can tell you one thing, it might seem as if this car would be super uncomfortable to drive and on first take you would assume so, I assume so, but it's actually super comfortable, nice body mold, nice and comfortable to drive. I've been driving it through traffic, giving it a bit of a go around the roads and this car absolutely has stood up to everything and like I said before it's easy to drive. It's got all the Toyota underpinnings, uh, clutch engagement is nice, throttle response is real great, instruments is where you need it right in front of you and this little one at the bottom here this is the funometer and this is the one you need to watch because this is exactly why this car is so amazing the 20 valve 4 ag 20 valve turbocharged the other engine at the back does the job one shot gear shifting nice and positive and um, got more of a race car feel to it than a road car but definitely something to get used to after about 10 minutes you know exactly what's going on let's have a look a little bit closer so a nice snug interior Starting with your ba all your basic gauges that you need. Uh, starting on the far right, we've obviously got the fuel gauge, uh, temperature oil gauge. We've got the speedo, rev counter, and heat gauge. Air fuel ratio is right in front, and then the one that you're going to watch probably most of the time, simply because of the turbocharged engine, and that's the boost gauge sitting over there. Shifter is a full-on aluminium race-style shifter. Nice and easy to use, and it's giving you a nice positive shifts. And one of the most surprising parts of this car was the composite seats. Uh, the seats I found was super comfortable, even though it's got absolutely no padding inside. Obviously, there's all sorts of different options. You can customize this car, and that's the beauty of this car, is you can customize it exactly the way you want. This example is a full-on race version, so it's all business, but on the street, it does what it needs to do. So we've been running around the hills here in Cape Town, an amazing day out, nice and sunshine, and what better than the Type 5 Harper sports car. We're going to have a closer look and see exactly what this car is made of. Come and have a quick look. So keeping this car on the road is a set of 15 inch Pistenza semi-slicks. What's great about these tires is that it's going to give you great off-road or if you would call it on-track use and then daily driving. So you got that flexibility. So you can drive it to work on Friday, hit the track on Saturday, have a great day out. Best of both worlds. And obviously being that it's a 15 inch, it's nice and easy to maintain. Let's have a look around the front. So the design of this car is all LMP2 Lamar look. And that's exactly what Craig Harper went for and exactly what he got. Great looking car, all about downforce and obviously going fast around the track. Should you find yourself driving around at night with the car more than enough lighting than you'll ever need. Let's have a look around this side. So around this side you can see we've got the air ducts for the radiators, more than enough cooling coming in. This car is turbocharged, does need as much cooling as it can get, we'll get to that in just a minute. The interior of the car, 
big thing on here is the composite seats, the one I'm driving. And obviously the composite seats may look a little bit uncomfortable, but actually are really comfortable. I've been cruising around in this car for what, about an hour, and I felt absolutely no fatigue. So this is an all business interior. There are customizable options, so should you use this car more on a daily basis, you could make this exactly the way that you want. Let's have a look around the back here. Intercooler for the turbocharged engine. This is a 20 valve Toyota 4 AGE engine making around 170 kilowatts and 380 newton meters of torque. All that from a little 1600, more than enough power than you'll ever need. But a downforce is required now and then, especially if you're hitting certain racetracks. Different conditions demand for different setups. You don't always need to drive around with a wing on the back, but it does help adding that extra bit of kilograms downforce on the rear, making sure everything is in check. Let's have a look at the exhaust. <laughs> Fooled you. There's no exhaust here. Come have a look. Yep, that's the exhaust. Proper racing style side exit exhaust. So right behind your head, you're going to have flames. You're going to have all the popping sounds. It's going to give you the entire experience of as you would be riding a racing car. And just so that you know, this car runs on racing fuel only. I'm here with Craig Harper from Harper Sports Cars and we've just been out driving his Type 5. So we're going to get a little bit of the lowdown of the car. But just before we get into that, Craig, uh, thanks for letting us go for a ride in the Type 5 Turbo. Absolutely blew my hair back. Tell us a little bit more about how you got started and how your journey led you to the Type 5 Turbo. Well, it starts as it does with most projects. I had a Toyota engine. <laughs> I had a Toyota engine. When this car was first conceived of in um, Botswana, when I built the car there, it was kind of a time filler, and, and I literally bought a Corolla, which is to be wrapped around a trio, going for no money at all, so I bought that. And I bought a, a, like, a car and, and transferred all the materials across, but it was, it was the sort of the 4F motor, mm. the, the weak one, yeah. or the 7F, I think it's a 1500 cc. Nice little motor, but nothing, nothing to write on the bike. Of course, now you've got a Toyota gearbox, and it's a, you've always got to be careful when you start a project. Start off. Where you start to import, it's going to influence the rest of the project. So then, of course, I heard about the 20 valve uh, for AGE. Brought one up uh, into Botswana from, um, from, from one of the importers. What a motor. I mean, that 20 valve motor. Scream is going to go down in the industry as one of the classic motors. Um, and that was in for a long time. And I tried to get all my clients to keep it there. Keep it 20 valve. Keep it standard. Keep it uh, naturally aspirated. Well, customers are like hooting cats. They just have their own <laughs> idea. They go off on their own tangent. No, no, no. One wants more power. One, one, one wants a V8, so they've all gone. So I've just decided, well, okay. So it has remained largely Toyota, but all kinds of <laughs> Toyota. <laughs> not for AGE and not naturally aspirated. Uh, and, and I found that I was, uh, I was seriously, the car, from a performance aspect, was definitely suffering. It, you know, it just needed more power. Mm. And I embarked on the turbocharging of this motor, which is not easy on the 20 valve. It's, it's intakes, it's exhausts, it's the whole deal. The internals aren't strong enough, you've got to change those, the compression ratio is too high. But if you get all of that right, it's got that lovely five valve head, and man, does that flow gas. That is just made to flow air. And, and I actually love, love how it's turned out, I really do. A bit of racing as well. I mean, you were out racing last week. How did the car go on the track? Oh, I'll this year. This was a shakedown race, and we won it. Wow, well done. Yeah. Overall, well done. Uh, uh, brand new, brand new engine package, still feeling our way a little bit with the, with the turbo and how much boost we can carry and, and so on. And you know, what a pleasure. I had a lovely race with Danny Fanica. <laughs> what a great guy as well. And a superb driver. He, he kept me honest the whole way through. And eventually, I managed to, uh, to work, to work my way past him. But, um, the, the car was was, um, was fantastic, and following a car like that, like down with the BMW, you're worrying about your, your engine temperatures and that sort of thing. You know, you're worrying about, because you haven't got the cold, right. cold air that you have right. when you've got clean air. So, although you're getting a nice tone on the straight, you're keeping an eye on your temperature gauge. And, you know, we had um, probably, probably 50 kilowatts more than we ever had before. Wow. And that's well, naturally yeah. that. and, uh, and, and your cooling system has to deal with that extra heat load. Exactly. That didn't work well. Your car felt good. I was a bit rusty. <laughs> and I'll be, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm not the fastest. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that 
No, but I'm a fast <laughs> sitting walk. I used to think that I was, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, but uh, certainly I didn't. I wouldn't make that claim anymore. But I had an absolute blast. Had a great run with the Type 5 Turbo. Tell us a little bit more about the car itself and how you got to the end result, which is the Type 5 Turbo that you're driving today. How did it all begin for you? The Type 5 is a, it's a space frame vehicle, mm -hmm. steel space frame with a, with a glass fiber body. And the mechanicals are largely Toyota. Okay. The, it doesn't have to be, but Toyota make a, a range of fantastic engines. One of them is the engine that's in this car, which was naturally aspirated originally. To begin with. Yeah, not turbocharged. I don't recommend anyone tries to the 20 volt motor and turbo. <laughs> All those have done it. It's doable and it's <laughs> awesome, but it's a very complicated process. The car behind us, like, yeah, it's got the 2 litre Seneca GT4 motor. That's the right motor to stick with. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the Lexus V8 motor, which with a turbo plus Absolute motor. monster. You can just imagine. <laughs> so you've got all these lovely motors, and they all come in from Japan, really sort of very, very cheap pieces. And they're well-made motors, so they're reliable. Um, so that's, so the mechanicals or the engine and the gearbox is, is l largely uh, Toyota. Uh, the uprights, the brakes, the calipers, the steering column, it's all corroded. So it's easy to get, easy to job. fix. I love the performance. Like when I was driving the car, I could feel you know down the bottom of the rev range. The car was really nice and you know responsive and easy to drive. The minute that boost came on tap, oh, all sorts of things started happening behind you. I know. <laughs> That's so much fun. It's addictive. Is any fuel in the car? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just to reverse it out. <laughs> no, it's that much fun. You just want to do it again and again and again. And that's the problem with this car on the street. You've got to be careful not to break the law. Uh, look, we're all going to have a bit of fun, but you can get you can get going really, really quickly, really fast, mm. very fast, very, very short soon. space of time. Yeah, and, and that's that. You know, you've got to keep it about you. It's not a toy that you want to no. drive to anyway. Not really, got to be. And if the roads are a bit greasy, then you've really got to be very right careful. It's, it's not a toy. Um, but how rewarding is it to drive? I mean, she's really up and go. And you've, got to, you've got to come to the track next weekend, to the track day. Yeah. And you can lean on the on the handle. Yeah. <laughs> then you can, then it'll make a whole lot more sense to you, because you can't access the handle on the road. You mm -hmm. can't. Really. No. So, so very bumpy becomes a little bit unsettled, particularly if you're going to bump your road. This yeah. on a smooth track. Uh, it, it's it's a whole. That's where it's that's where it's happy. Yeah, the, the, the penny will drop for you completely there because you've got the power, but you also got this way that you can attack the corners and get through the corners. You can maintain apex speed. You can break really really late. Mm -hmm. You climb on the power early and stand on the power and, and come out the corner. If you try that on the street, you've been antisocial and, and frankly reckless. It belongs on the track, that kind of performance. But I'm glad you drove it in traffic today because that's, you know, if the car's going to be driven on the road, it must be easy to drive on the road. Uh, Herman at, at Mace has been working with me at Spectronics, getting the thing to really be drivable like it is. And they've done a fantastic job. You know, it's drivable up to, it's drivable at all road speeds you could possibly want to be at. Mm. Yeah, I never once had a hiccup. They're off boost. Yeah. You're having a touch the boost and you can do speed limit on the highway or whatever. When you get it past 5,000 RPM, <laughs> all the bells start ringing. That's when things start happening. And it just, it just, gets, it just transforms. It comes another car. It yeah, comes it does. And, and that's what I like about this car. It's got that dual personality now. Look, I'm still playing with the turbo. It's, it's a whole new adventure for me on this particular car. But I'm loving the experience. It's really it's a lot of fun. And I love driving this car very as well. And the custom customizable side of it, I mean, you have quite a bit of freedom, so if a client comes to you and says, oh, well, I want it more for road use rather than track use, then there's certain things that you can change on the system to make it accustomed to what the client wants. And that doesn't make it any slower. I mean, you've done, no. you've done a car for Elia who said, I'm never going to race this car. So no, that's fine. Yeah, this is just, you get, we, we built, he wanted us to build him a rolling chassis with the 2 litre turbocharged motor. That's 200 kilowatts and 400 newtons, and that's the slow, that's the slowest of the cars. I mean, that's, Totally road bias. He's done a magnificent job. He's got a fantastic uh, build blog of here. He's done his own interior. He's done little glove boxes and little cubbies here and there. Anyway, it's really superb. It's a yellow car. It's just, yeah, it's a road car. And then you've got, um, uh, you've got Bruce Butler in, 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 in East London, who's got this insane snorting two litre with I don't know how many kilowatts in it. It just looks like, and it's only going to be a, 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 a race car. car. And mine's always going to be a crossover. And a little bit more about the future of Hopper Motorsports. I know you've got a bit of endurance racing coming up. Um, I know you've got a couple of projects waiting outside. Uh, tell us a bit more about that. Uh, motorsports is always going to be important to us. It's going to remain important to us. It's, uh, it's obviously my endeavor. It's competition. 
uh, and the endurance racing is my is my main passion. Mm. I mean, as we speak, sitting here today, they're racing in Bulawayo, the three-hour endurance. That's that's my race. That's your race. And the guys are there, and I'm wondering what the weather's like and how it's going to turn out. And they're teeing off in a couple of hours. So uh, next year, endurance racing. Mm -hmm. Do the do the African endurance championship. That's a national series next year. Right. It's given national status. So. Uh, that'll that'll certainly uh, be remain important, uh, and we have some exciting new projects like you like you say. Mm. I mean, we got the Fiat, so there's Fiat. I'm super excited about this. Fiat. Sure, I'm so excited about the Fiat <laughs> as well. Uh, that's that's exciting, and some also to take some old classics and reinvent them. You know, some uh, like Basil Green Perron. Yes, yes. yes. Get one of those. Reinvent it again. I mean, they still exist. Those old 1600 and 1300 Capri. Make them an old car, kind of yeah. bring it up to, up to speed. Give it some, just modernize the suspension, make it up, make it a proper performance car, but keep the classic look. You know? So that sort of thing would be, be a lot of fun for us to do as well for 2017 mm -hmm. and onward. But we're going to stick with our with our with our Harpers, our Type Six and our Type Five. Those uh, uh, have come a long way, and I want to keep pushing on those. Yeah, you know definitely. what I mean. Nice definitely. <laughs> and that's it. We're done. Thanks to Craig Harper from Hopper Motorsports for this amazing adventure he's given us. We've been out in the Type 5 Turbo today, had an absolute blast. Make sure and follow us, go to 53CTOR.com, otherwise go check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash 53CTOR. Like, share, we've got more stuff coming. Thank you.